In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Kublai Khan. I can't recall where I first heard about the Potomac Arcs. I might have been doing some research for another project when some small mention of them caught my eye. The floating brothels of the Potomac. And somehow, when I was imagining these boats, small snatches of Coolridge's fragmented poem would come to mind. Opulence, metaphorical pleasure, and the river. Intrigued, I decided to research more and soon found out that the Potomac River was filled with these brothel boats in the years after the Civil War, up until sometime between the 1920s and 1940s. According to John Wennerston's Historic Waterfront of Washington, as Washington became a center of military and industrial activity during the Civil War, it also became a city awash in a tidal wave of cash. Prostitution, an activity long associated with the Potomac waterfront, increased dramatically. Around the same time, local boat builders invented the Potomac Ark, an inexpensive houseboat that could house fishermen and shipyard workers. Frederick Tilp, author of This Was Potomac River, described what these boats were like. The standard specifications called for a boat 24 feet by 10 feet by 12 inches draft with a flat bottom and square ends. It would have cedar clapboard siding, red painted flat tin roof, two windows, two doors, and would be lighted by kerosene lamps, and would use a coal-fired stove for heating and cooking. Arcs moored at the water's edge rested on the bottom at low tide, and pulling and rowing were their only means of propulsion. Though these boats were designed for fishermen and shipyard workers, pollution caused fishing and shipbuilding to decline, and eventually these arcs were sold to sex workers that operated close to the river. In time, the Potomac was filled with hundreds of floating brothel boats. By the early 1900s, the arcs began to spread beyond the confines of Washington, D.C. and to nearby cities in Maryland and Virginia. These states were safe havens for the Arcs because Alexandria had sympathetic politicians and influential gentry, while Maryland State Police were too busy chasing oyster pirates. Tilt described the Ark operations as a one-woman type of enterprise. Each woman ran her own business on her own Ark at whatever location she pleased. Park Rouse, in a Daily Press article about the historical body houses in Virginia, quoted the Virginia Canals and Navigation Society's description of these arcs as small floating houses of prostitution, most of them painted blue or white, the more high-class boats usually were white with blue roofs and shutters, lined the shores and clustered around gambling casino boats. The most famous of these arcs, according to Tilp, was the only known two-story houseboat named The Dream, run by a lady named Madame Rose. Though there is little mention of the arcs in the press during this time period, the dream was featured in a 1905 Alexandria Gazette article entitled Aquatic Temptations. The article states that the infamous brothel survived a terrible northwest storm, and the scenes of revelry on board were not checked by the wild outside elements, and the small boats continued during day and night carrying patrons to and fro. The article also mentions a second opulent boat that the Dream's owner was building, patterned after one belonging to the King of Siam. Unfortunately, like the majority of these boats, its fate is unknown. These brothels and gambling arts flourished because Virginia had no jurisdiction over the river and because Maryland and the district ignored them. A Washington Post article from 1905 when describing a gambling ark that frequented the waters just outside Alexandria, acknowledged that the ark is slow but clumsy, but she flirts erringly outside the law. If the ark happens to be lying in the district line and the metropolitan officers attempt to raid her, the anchor is up in a trice and in 30 seconds she has drifted into Maryland or Virginia, beyond the reach of pursuing officials. Likewise, if Maryland or Virginia police attempted a raid, the boat would then cross back over into the district. In a similar manner, these brothel arcs evaded the law. 
And so these illicit businesses boomed until the late 1920s when the surveys for George Washington Highway began up and down the Potomac. Donald Chomet, a Mallows Bay historian, notes that the Potomac Arc saw resurgence during the Great Depression, since scavengers would come to the wrecks moored in Mallows Bay and acquire scrap metal. As a result, the colonies of bootleggers, gamblers, and prostitutes thrived once more. Though I can't recall where I might have read it, supposedly the remains of some of those boats are among the shipwrecks in Maryland's Mallows Bay. Though the Arks would survive through World War II, they were entirely wiped out by the 1960s. The last known photograph of an Ark is in Tilp's Nautical Tome. Taken in 1957, the photo shows a small Ark in Great Hunting Creek, Virginia. And so the Potomac Ark disappeared from history. Until 1993, that is. Alexandria city workers had started demolishing a blighted part of the Alexandria waterfront and ceased operations when they discovered that the structure was part of a wooden barge sunken in the dirt. The Washington Post continues, city historians quickly arrived and declared it an ark, built around 1900 and the only known survivor among thousands of houseboats, gambling barges, and floating brothels that lined the Potomac River from the Civil War to after World War II. Though historians could not ascertain what the use of this particular ark was, there's no doubt is a unique and priceless part of history on the Potomac. The Ark was given to the Alexandria Seaport Foundation. The foundation restored the Ark and it now serves as the Michelinie Seaport Center, the headquarters for the foundation. This foundation helps troubled youth. It's funny to think that this Ark may have once been a gambling house or brothel, but now it serves as a safe haven for at-risk youth. Pretty cool if you ask me.